I think it's one of those things where you're so afraid that somebody knows you did something wrong that you don't want to admit it because it makes you look bad, when in reality, if you just admit the mistake you made, people, that's what they want anyway. They just want you to say, hey, yeah, I know, you're right. I made a mistake and I apologize. It's easier to let the f negative things fester and and be an issue when you have responsibilities and you have pets and you have household and maybe you have kids. I don't want all the negative things to be what's focused on, but the negative things are what need to improve. So it's hard not to focus on those. Next Level Nation, welcome back to another episode of Next Level University, where we help you level up your life, your love, your health, and your wealth. We hope you enjoyed yesterday's episode, episode number 1,654, Stop Running From Uncertainty. Today, for episode number 1,655, the four relationship killers. You and I have had many dialogues on this podcast, Alan, where... For some reason, I've always been pretty good at predicting whether or not a relationship will succeed. Oh, yeah. And upon looking at these four relationship killers, I believe they are called the four horsemen. What are they called by uh, Dr. John Gottman? The four horsemen. The four horsemen? Let me make sure here. The four horsemen of the apocalypse. Heavy. Definitely. It's heavy. Uh, upon looking at these, I believe one of the reasons I've been pretty accurate, unfortunately, of all potential skills to have, this one's not necessarily the best one. It's almost like instead of preventing a car accident, you just know when it's going to happen. Not quite a super. But if you know when it's going to happen, you it's can fair learn how to prevent it. It's fair. It's fair. But that's Which is what we're going to talk about. Yeah, it's not necessarily my line of work. You know, this is more your more in your wheelhouse than mine. But this actually so I don't know maybe a, year, a couple of years ago, two years ago on the podcast, I said that there was someone that uh, Tara and I had come in contact with. I don't want to, I, I want to leave anonymity. It's nobody super close to us, not friends or anything like that. But we were spending time with them. And when we were spending time with them, one of them slipped and fell. And they landed in the water and they had a very expensive camera. And the, their partner criticized them and kind of got mad at them for falling and i told taryn i said that's not gonna last there's no way oh, that of course not yeah that's so th th the relationship now ceases to exist as of this date so that ended up kind of coming true unfortunately and the reason behind it is one of these for relationship killers was very, very obvious and very, very out there. So I'll let you go through them because you and Emilia just did a a presentation on this and you've taught this more than I have. But shout out to my wonderful wife who introduced Alan and I to Dr. John Gottman's work when her and I first started dating many moons ago and this framework started with him. Yeah, we were at a Friendsgiving or some sort of get together and... Emilia and I were brand new, and Taryn texted me, Kevin's wife Taryn, texted me this whole pretty long text about how she thinks I would love John Gottman's work and how there's a bid system and all kinds of stuff. So shout out to Taryn for introducing me to this. Emilia studied this a ton as well. We've used this, we've used this on the Conscious Couples podcast, and we just did an event on it. In the event, we actually found out, Kev, that stonewalling was the most common within our community. That was, we went to the chat and we did a search function to figure out how many times each one came up. Stonewalling was the most popular. Fair. We'll go through each. But first, I want to provide this. So, John Gottman's work, they did a research study where they recorded intimate partners interacting for 30 seconds. And within those clips, similar to Kevin kind of talking about how he can predict with high accuracy whether or not a couple will be together or not. John Gottman did an actual research study of that where he looked at the 30 seconds and he looked for these four horsemen, these four relationship killers is what we're calling them at the Wii. And he found that the percentage of those relationship killers that were in the 30 seconds determined the probability that the couple would not be together within 10 years. They followed up with those same couples 10 years later and John Gottman, all the numbers came back the research study came back with he could predict with 94% accuracy, meaning 94% of the predictions were accurate 
after looking at 30 seconds of two intimate partners coming together. That's why it's so famous, because it's wild to think about. And underneath it all, it's this undertone of disrespect. It's this undertone of I am better than you type of thing. And we've all seen it. If you ever watch the movie Titanic, I like to reference it a lot. I know our listeners know that. The Cal, the, the villain in the movie, is wicked condescending. He's very, I'm better than everyone else. You know, I own a steel mill. And he is constantly treating Rose as property. So I think underneath underneath all of these relationship killers, this is my own insight, so don't quote me on this, but my own insight is I think underneath it is just this undertone of disrespect and this undertone of superiority that tends to destroy the relationship over time. And the way that superiority manifests, I think, is through these four. So number one is criticism. And I'm going to read what we defined them, Emilia defined them in the event. Criticism is an attack on a partner's character, beliefs, personality, appearance, or actions. So Kevin and I are really playful on this podcast and we throw playful jabs at each other jokingly, but you can always feel it in the energy if it really is actually a toxic poke. Yeah. Uh, Emilia and I call them stingers. In our relationship, if one of us throws a stinger, it's like, ooh. And, and I say the word stinger or she does and it's like, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm overwhelmed. And then we slip into vulnerability. Okay, so number one is criticism. Number two... One moment, please. Stonewalling. This is the one that was most common with the conscious couples community. Stonewalling is when a partner is disengaging from the conversation. This is one of those, like, and the best story that I have for this is when Emilia and I first got together, I was super vulnerable and fearful because I was falling head over heels in love, and she sent an energy shift, and it was late at night. And she's like, are you okay? Is everything good? And I was like, oh, I'm fine. I'm just tired. That was an stonewall of don't ask I'm uh, opportunity to connect and be vulnerable and instead it's like no I'm good and so I turned over and then I said Alan you idiot uh you know don't do this just tell her the truth you're not tired you're staring at the wall right you're fearful as hell and so you got to be vulnerable you got to be courageous so I turned over and I said truth be told I'm falling head over heels in love with you I'm fearful to get hurt again and I'm afraid that you don't feel the same way uh it's funny now but at the time, it was terrible. Uh, but she did. She also went vulnerable, and it, we ended up having this wonderful evening together. So Requited that was an love. example. Requited love. Say again? Requited love. Like unrequited love, but requited. I don't know what that means. Unrequited love is like Romeo, not Romeo and Juliet. Yeah, maybe Romeo and Juliet. Unrequited love is when you love someone and they don't love you back, I think. Oh. Requited love, I must assume, since there's no un- is when you love someone, they love you back. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's the better kind. I hope so, yeah. That's way better, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's stonewalling. When someone completely disengaged, like literally get out, like that kind of thing. Okay, that's stonewalling. And that one is common. And I think another reason for stonewalling too, I'll be brief about this, but you don't want to hurt your partner when you're frustrated. So sometimes it's get out because I'm going to hurt you. Yeah. I'm triggered. Well, it's fear. And, yeah. Either it's way, fear. it's fear. Yeah. Defensiveness. Defensiveness is denying responsibility when communicating to or about the other. Uh, defensiveness is my common one in our relationship. I get really defensive. She'll say something and I'll get triggered and it'll it'll poke something from my past and I'll get like defensive. Like She'll ask a question, simple question. Hey, how did you know that? And I think she needs me to justify mm. why I'm accurate in my thinking and why this is the best next move that is not at all she actually wants to learn which i've been growing through with Emilia for for almost five years now Def- we all have a big one now i want all the listeners to really think and we did this at the event too raise your hand for your biggest one and so defensiveness was mine stole stonewalling was her hers she doesn't want to hurt me when she's frustrated so she'll like take time and she'll keep create distance which will then make me more anxious. So we work through that. And conflict resolution is, we're going to get to the antidotes as well, by the way. The antidotes is what we did in the event of, these are the solutions when you rec- uh, recognize that these are happening. Okay, last one. And this is the big one. This is the what we called the nail in the coffin. If you do this one and you do it wrong and you do it a lot, your relationship is going to die, most likely. The research shows that as well. 
by the way. Okay, contempt is a more severe escalation of criticism. So picture, hey, the food was kind of shitty tonight. That's like criticism and it's pretty hardcore versus you're a terrible cook. Mm. See, one of them is like attacking the person at another level with a raised voice and it's just not, it's just nail in the coffin type of thing. The target of contempt is made to feel despised and worthless. It, the goal is to make your partner feel less than. And again, Titanic reference, I know it's a popular movie, so that's why I reference it. Cal does that a lot with Rose. So we used the movie The Breakup as an example. So if you've never seen The Breakup, it was in 2006 with Vince Vaughn and Jennifer. It's a good one. Jennifer Aniston. It is funny. It's a funny movie. Now it's a little less funny <laughs> now that yeah, I know yeah. what's going on. You know what I wish, Kev? I wish everyone at that table had their own little bag of lemons, their own little <laughs> private bag of lemons. <laughs> you know, my baby wants, my baby gets. And uh, baby wanted 12, 12 lemons. He's like, oh, why would you need 12 lemons? You know? So anyways, okay, the antidotes. Here we go. Number one, criticism. The antidote is gentle vulnerability. So instead of criticizing, uh, I'll use the lemons. Instead of criticizing her cooking, which is what he did in the film, he could have said, honestly, I was overwhelmed today. I should have gotten you 12 lemons. I'm, I'm scared that our parents are going to meet tonight. And the truth is, I'm playing video games, drinking a beer because I'm anxious. I just need a minute. I'm sorry. How can I help? You just got to slip into that vulnerability. <laughs> vulnerability. <laughs> In order to solve, and most relationship issues, by the way, are a lack of courage, humility, and vulnerability. I'll just say that. Boom. That's the thing that keeps coming up every single episode, every single event. Antidote number two. So number two was, hold on, stonewalling. The antidote to stonewalling is self-soothing. How do you self-regulate your emotions? So when you're about to explode or the volcano is about to erupt, instead of stonewalling, to protect yourself and your partner, what if you took a box breath, said, hey, I'm gonna, I'll am gonna, i be right back. I just need a minute. I need to go outside. I need to take a shower, whatever. Like, Go take a minute, but communicate that it's not a stonewall. We're going to come back to this. Yep. I'm not, I'm not forget, like, don't talk. We're never going to not talk about this. Stonewalling is cut it off. We're not talking about this. This is over. We're done with this conversation. And then you never bring it up again. Whereas self-soothing is I'm going to take a walk and I'll be back, and I love you, and we're going to come back to this. Is that okay? And then your partner says, okay, cool. And then they take a minute, and then you come back from an emotional, uh, emotionally centered place. Okay, antidote number three. Number three was defensiveness. That was my big one. The antidote, fortunately, is take responsibility. Ah, uh, yeah, no, that's my bad. That's my bad. <laughs> that's on me. Truth be told, I feel kind of like shit about myself lately. I've been letting myself down. I, I said I would do the dishes. I said I, but, but, but I got a live event coming up. I'm sorry. I, I know I've been a little, I've been not meeting your expectations. Your needs have been neglected. Whatever. Take ownership. Not over ownership. You can't take over ownership because if you do that, that's a dangerous game. But um, the defensiveness is usually the lack of response uh, responsibility. So for example, again, in the breakup, He's like, I really wish everyone had their own little private bag of lemons. Instead of making fun of it and being defensive, he could have taken ownership of, yeah, I, I should have done the one thing you asked. That's on me. My bad. Kevin and I, we do this all the time where it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's on me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, that's, yeah. I've found that that's just the best <laughs> way to do it. I hey, think, Kev, did you mail the... Mm -mm. No, 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 no. Nope. <laughs> nope. you know, that was our that was our tax our tax debacle of 2019 or 2020, whatever it was. That's brutal. It NLU listener, what is happening? I just wanted to jump in here and let you know if you want to get to the next level faster, we have a free virtual monthly meetup at the first Thursday of every month, 6 p.m. Eastern time. You can connect with like-minded people and become a bigger part of this amazing global community. The link to register will be in the show notes. I think it's one of those things where you're so afraid that somebody knows you did something wrong that you don't want to admit it because it makes you look bad. When in reality, if you just admit the mistake you made, people, that's what they want anyway. They just want you to say, hey, yeah, I know you're right. I made a mistake and I apologize. I got feedback from clients today. We just, we just helped or we just started working with a 
a podcast last week or two weeks ago. And the it just wasn't super smooth in the beginning. And I stepped in and I said, it's on us. I take full responsibility. We'll, we'll make it better. And that's what they said to me today. They said, we really appreciate how you own the fact that things weren't super smooth. Everything's awesome now. Thank you so much. And I said, nice. it's, it's my goal to, if I blame it on you and run away, I'm not going to learn from it. And we're all going to leave mad at each other and it's not going to be constructive. And, and then you're going to lose the client. Yeah. I know things could have been better. Now, who am I, who am I kidding? Can you give an example of owner over ownership though? Because you oh, you've yeah, gone yeah. that way too. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't want to use uh, from a client standpoint. Whatever, any any over ownership. Oh man, I don't know. I don't know if I'm really a good one to give an example with this because I think I do take over ownership, especially when it comes to the business at times. Because sometimes that's. If you want to grow a business, sometimes that's the way to do it. Definitely. You know, we're not at the stage where I can say, well, you know what? Okay, well, this is this is this is a good one. I recently, for lack of better phrasing, fired a client because I was taking over ownership for the fact that they weren't happy with the way things were working, but they are just not easy to work with. They are very challenging to work with. They're very sweet. They're it's a very sweet human. But they're not good at communicating their expectations and they expect us to be on time when they're not. And it's this whole thing. And I was quite literally losing sleep over it. And I went to them and said, look, I am putting myself through the ringer to make this happen. And the team is putting themselves through the ringer and it's not fair to them. I don't think this is going to work. I think you'd probably be better suited with someone else. Nice. So that started from a place of me taking just over ownership and burning myself out and and always losing. No matter what I did, it was always, well... Thanks so much for trying, but it didn't happen. Or this time was better, but it's never as good as it needs to be. It's like, that's just not a winning game for me. 100%. A so, couple examples. Well said. Thank well you. said. Thank you. Last one, contempt. That's the nail in the coffin. The contempt is a, is a more intense form of criticism. Contempt, remember, is, uh, hey, the cooking was a little off tonight versus you're a terrible effing cook. One of them is just escalated, you know, nail in the coffin. The antidote is consistently cultivating appreciation in advance. It needs to be over time. It needs to be consistent over time. In the movie The Breakup, and if you've seen the film, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. For those of you who haven't, since it wasn't big and came out in 2006. So for those of you who haven't seen it, totally understandable. If you do watch it, I do want you to say, I, w I do want to say watching it from this frame was fascinating. Super fascinating. Because they destroyed their relationship pretty much in the very first 20 minutes and then the whole rest of the movie is them just fumbling through how to get back how to get it back mm. and by the time they actually have courage vulnerability and, and effective communication is basically at the end when they already kind of burnt it down and then she says you know i got nothing left we already we already did this for too long We're, i'm too hurt and i think that's a good lesson for everybody and i think many of us have been there definitely i certainly have consistently cultivate appreciation so this is the gratitude game. This is, okay, maybe my partner frustrates me X, Y, Z, but what are the upsides that come with those downsides? Let me take me out of the equation for a second. What if they weren't my partner? What do I value about them? What do I appreciate about them? Have, have I forgotten how awesome it is to be with this person? Have I forgotten how terrible it was to be with my ex? This appreciation piece has to be behind the scenes every single day because otherwise you're inevitably going to let the... It's easier to let the f negative things fester and and be an issue when you have responsibilities and you have pets and you have household and you, maybe you have kids. It's so easy, and I tell Kevin this all the time in business, I don't want all the negative things to be what's focused on, but... The negative things are what need to improve. So it's hard not to focus on those. No. The great things about Next Level Live don't need to change. So it's harder to like celebrate those first when these, 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 the, you know, these other things need to improve. And if you're a self improvement oriented person, you might be guilty of focusing too much on what needs to improve and not enough on what's great about your partner or about your relationship. And so the antidote is consistently cultivating appreciation. The gratitude game every night is 
a game changer. Emilia and I did it for three and a half years. We took six months off and I don't know if it was three, three to six months. And I said, Emilia, we need this back. We need this back. I can tell it's not the same. We, we're, we, we gotta be careful here. Like, I don't feel as grateful. I don't mm-hmm. want to bicker. I don't want us to be mad at each other all the time and that kind of thing. And I don't want to ever get to that place. I want to stop that train long before it ever gets there because I think a lot of people wake up 5, 10, 15 years later and go, do we even like each other anymore? 100%. What happened here, right? So I never want that to happen. I will not screw this up. And I think it's going to take the gratitude game. I'll do the gratitude game for the rest of my relationship, for the rest of my life. Definitely. It's a, it's a habit. It's I'm willing to bet that one of the reasons... Because if we were to think, okay, why do many of us struggle to get our health goals? Why do many of us struggle to get our wealth goals? Why do many of us struggle to get our relationship goals? We just don't have the habits down yet. That's all. And a habit is something that you do for a long period of time. It's not a seasonal thing. So if you are committed to growing in your relationship, it's got to be something you do for a long period of time. A couple things I, I'll add just quickly. You and I have said this many times but behind the scenes to one another. I don't know if you use it in your relationship. I have definitely in the past. Lead with praise. If if you do feel the need to criticize or to point out something that could be improved, point out something that was really good first. So, hey, definitely. I, I really... Yeah, it's it's, a, it's awesome. I really appreciated dinner tonight. It was so thoughtful that you stopped and got whatever. And sometimes when we have dinners late, I struggle because I wake up the next day and there's a bunch of dishes and it just, it feels really overwhelming to me. Is that something maybe we could work on? Something like that. Right? Lead with praise. Dinner was awesome. It was amazing. This has nothing to do with the quality of the dinner. If it's you or me, it's usually the dinner was awesome. Thank you so much for being so thoughtful. I'm really grateful, but I'm going to need the portions to double. <laughs> I'm going to need you to double up on portions. For me, it's usually, do you mind <laughs> if I wait to do the dishes until the morning because it's yeah, late yeah, yeah. and I want to go to bed? <laughs> that, and then the, the we did an episode of this a while ago, and this was from one of our clients, Yvette. Yvette's a, an amazing doctor of psychology. She's all sorts of different things. Ah, Yvette's the one I'm. Yes, yeah, yeah you're she's talking to be on Yvette. a call with. That's yeah, yeah. awesome. Yvette nice. was. I didn't know it was that. Was the that, same. That's person. the one. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna love her. I can't wait for you guys to meet. Nice. But I noticed when I was talking to her that she never says "but," and we did an episode on one word that can really Jeff any relationship. It's when you're saying something and you say "but," it kind of negates everything that you just said. So even in the leading with praise, dinner was two versions. Dinner was really great tonight, but, or dinner was really great tonight and. It's two different, it's two different stories. So those are a couple micro things I would add to today's episode. Very last thing, duality with relationships. We've talked about duality a lot to Kevin's point with the and, the power of the and, the genius of the and. It was called the genius of the and in Jim Collins' business books. The genius of the and. Radical humility and extreme confidence. Not Mm. or, not but. So the duality piece. Isn't it possible to be grateful for the meal and the thoughtfulness of the meal and be a little disappointed with the portions? Yeah, definitely. Exactly. And I think that unfortunately we only express one and not the other. And if you only express one and you suppress the negative... Now you are creating maybe um, bugs in the garden that are going to grow bigger because it's going to keep happening. Yeah. But if you only express the criticism or the, the no, not the criticism, the improvement and never the appreciation, the other person's going to be like, are you kidding me? You ungrateful <laughs> bastard. <laughs> so <laughs> so you, it's the end. The end is the way, I'm telling you. In leadership, in relationships, in relationship with self, Alan, good job going to the gym, and next time, come on, man, show up, will you? Right? So work a little harder. Finish that set. You know, get a little stronger, whatever it is. So it's an and, and I think that the power of the and, the genius of the and is a game changer. I think we are really good at communicating what we value, Mm -hmm. even if it's not in a positive way. That, if you really care about portion size, you, maybe you're not you don't care about the quality of the meal as much so you're naturally going to point out the thing that you value the most of course and you if know, you don't they won't necessarily 
read your mind about what you right. value. Right. Well, so you have to bring it up. You just have to do it in a kind way that's not criticism yeah. or contempt. Relationships are hard, man. Yeah, oh, yeah. Everything's hard. Everything's hard. Facts. Life is hard. Life is challenging. But with the proper habits, and I'll, I'll also put this out there, with the proper partner, that's also important because if what we have found, and I'm sure relationship talks and the we and conscious couples podcast is probably similar definitely usually the people listening are not the issues in the relationship that's just the well, way it is so shout out to you focused on trying to improve yeah yeah shout out shout out to you for most likely being an amazing human so you got to have the right partner it's it's very hard to succeed in a relationship never mind if you don't have the right person in your corner the person who's going back to the drawing board to improve is rarely the real problem. <laughs> I would concur with that. I would concur with that. All right. Next Level Nation, if you have not yet joined our private Facebook group, we will have the link in the show notes per usual. It's a great opportunity to get around positive people. And I know that everybody is looking to level up their community. And I don't mean that from an intrinsic place. I mean maybe from its a positivity place. Maybe you want to be authentic. Maybe people are crapping on your dreams. That will not happen in Next Level Nation. So the link will be in the show notes. We would absolutely love to have you join. Group 14 closes on April 9th. It's a Tuesday. Book your spot now. If you use promo code NLU listener, spelt just like it sounds, all capital or all lowercase, check out the website. Six bi weekly coaching sessions with Kevin, myself, and Amy as the chat master, and then there's bi-weekly connection calls to make sure that you are on point every step of the way, fully supported, team of 10 like-minded people. At this stage, you've probably heard, if you've been a long-term listener, that we've already done 13 groups. At this point, we've improved and iterated and improved and iterated 13 times with this. Reach out to me if you want the email addresses that I've gotten permission in advance to give you to ask other people's experience. You can reach out to these people, say, hey, what was your experience in group coaching? If you want to learn more, reach out to me, reach out to Kev, DM us, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn now, we're using LinkedIn again, and email Kevin or myself, Kevin at nextleveluniverse.com, Alan at nextleveluniverse.com. Just say, hey, I think I want in on group 14. I have a couple questions or whatever. Tomorrow for episode number 1,656, we've been getting so much good feedback on this, which makes me happy because... I told Alan, I said, I have an intuitive ping. I want to try something new. So we're going to do Freestyle Friday. Again, don't know what we're going to talk about. We won't know what we're going to talk about until we talk about it, and then we'll change the title of the episode. So the episode will be a little bit different. But shout out to everybody listening and all the wonderful feedback we've gotten. It's hard. It's it's uh, taking you behind the curtains for a second. It's hard to figure out what to do when you're so used to doing something a certain way. Mm-hmm. In the beginning, we had a certain way. We would do a different style episode every time. Like, oh, this is going to be a five-minute clinic, and this is going to be a small talk. So this is a scratching the surface. This is a guest interview. But as we've evolved and as we've changed, we've tried different stuff. So we want to try something new, and I appreciate all the positive feedback. As always, we love you. We appreciate you. We are grateful for each and every one of you. And at NLU, we do not have fans. We have family. We will talk to you all tomorrow. Stay connected in your intimate relationship. Next Level Nation.